Anatomy and Physiology of the Lymphatic System. Okay, are you ready to start? Okay, sit comfortably and now I'm going to explain to you the anatomy and the physiology of the lymphatic system, that is how it operates. Now, the lymphatic system is composed of different structures. We have the lympho nodes, we have the lymphatic capillaries, and we have the lymphatic vessels and ducts. These transport the lymph, which is an alkaline and colorless fluid, and this has two functions, that is to wet the spaces that are between one cell and the other, this is what we call interstitial lymph. In other words, it's a part of the plasma that has leaked out of the blood vessels. So this is, it is collected here, the waste of the cells is collected. The waste of the metabolism, or even better, of the catabolism of the cells. So these waste elements. The second function of the lymph is to be channeled first in very thin capillaries that can reach out between these structures. So this lymph is captured, it is channeled in these capillaries which then become lymph ducts and that's where the lymph is called vascular lymph. Now in simpler terms, the lymph that is spread throughout the body between the cells, that is the interstitial lymph. When this it then enters the capillaries and in the larger capillaries which are called lymph ducts until it reaches the uh, lymph ducts, this is called vascular lymph. Okay, so are you following me so far? I think it's quite simple, but anyway, you can always rewind this video if you've missed any steps. So, we can move on now. What I wanted to explain to you now is that the lymphatic system, other, uh, unlike the blood circulation system, does not have a heart that pumps the blood into the system. But these lymphatic vessels are activated through the muscle movement, through exercise or all those times that you breathe deeply. So the diaphragm is a regulator of these fluids and not only pressure. And so we can act upon this lymph and this lymphatic movement through lymphatic drainage, which is not a massage, it's a very superficial technique, it's a soft technique which must facilitate the movement of lymph which is very slow. S I have seen people do lymphatic drainage uh, in a rush. Well, what happens is this, the lymph, if the, man, if the technique is uh, uh, performed too quickly, the lymph will not move. So it will not be transported along the way. So for all those people who do lymphatic drainage where the pressure is greater and the speed is higher than normal, we will have to adjust our strength, the pressure that you apply in the massage, the, and the speed, which again will be very slow. The slower, the better. Now, to make sure that you have the right speed, I have enclosed in this video course an MP3 file that will provide you with the right regular beat. Along the course of the lymph, we find uh, the, the lymph is blocked. These are called lympho nodes, which are small centers, cleaning stations. Now these lymph nodes have afferent vessels, that is they enter the lymph node and supply the lymph. The lymph inside is processed and it is cleaned and once it has been filtered it leaks out of a smaller number of vessels which is from one to three and these are the efferent vessels. Now, remember that before we talked about the lymph and I told you that the lymph, when it is in these interstitial spaces, it's called interstitial lymph. Then when it enters the vessels, it's called vascular lymph. But vascular lymph 
must be subdivided further in, into further categories because before it is filtered by the lymph nodes it is called peripheral lymph then it enters these lymphatic vessels it is filtered by the lymph nodes and then it is called intermediate lymph or vascular lymph and finally we have the central lymph which is the one that circulates through um, the uh, lymphatic channels and it's ready to enter the blood circular the the vein system the venous system this is at the terminus where we have the subclavial artery and the jugular vein and then these two structures unite and so our task through lymphatic drainage is to supply as much liquid as possible to the terminus and to the other apparatus so that this lymph it re-enters the venous system. Lymph, like blood, is composed of two elements. We have the lymphatic plasma, which is fluid, and then we have uh, corpusculate elements, which are 90% composed of uh, leukocytes. So what happens here? The lymphatic plasma is very similar to that of blood but here we have a presence of proteins which is uh, reduced the corpusculate elements which is a very important element we have these lymphocytes which serve as tissue healing components so when we have a wound they intervene in reconstructing this tissue and that is the reason why even when we break a joint or a bone immediately this part will swell with lymph it's also important to know where the lymph is generated because so far i've told you where it goes but i haven't told you where it's generated well that's very simple the lymph is generated by the artery capillaries which due to the pressure given by the part through it the beating comes out of the capillaries through the and come, it's called the plasma almost as if it seeps out of these capillaries so this part this new lymph if it mixes with uh, the interstitial spaces and collects the toxins through the, that are generated through catabolism is then reabsorbed by the capillaries by the lymphatic capillaries and here then it starts its journey as i just told you along the lymphatic capillaries the lymphatic vessels and it is filtered by these lymph nodes we have around 600 700 lymph nodes throughout the, our body but in concentrated areas and we will see which, where they are first however i would like to spend a few words on lymph nodes now as i said before we have these lymphatic stations which are groupings of lymph nodes and then we also have single lymph nodes which are positioned around these uh, lymphatic vessels now because in the next videos we're going to start to do this lymphatic drainage you have to know that if you ever come across a painful lympho node or a swollen lympho node you must not massage it or even touch it because that would help to release toxins that that is generating at that point in time so you must not either work on them or touch them so now i can explain to you where where the main lymphatic stations are located the most important ones are in the neck then we have some in the uh, cervical zone we have them in the armpit we have them in the groin and also in the popliteal fossa that is in the knee pit then we also have other lymph nodes which are grouped in uh, a lower in a smaller concentration so they're sort of like a second category like in under the jaw in the arms in the abdomen in the in the ankles also we have some and last but not least uh, they're less concentrated here and so we will need to work on them also in a very detailed manner you will see that in the next videos so for completeness sake 